You are about to hear a romantic drama, Weekend Party, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine and featuring the love story girl in the role of Doris Blake. It is midsummer, the air warm and languid, the lake smooth and inviting, just the setting for a weekend party. Dot Quillen is giving one at her rustic lodge deep in the shadow of a murmuring forest. Dot and Doris Blake, her old schoolmate, are sneaking in a quick swim before the other guests arrive. Oh, Dot, it's too heavenly having a lake like this, all of your very own. The water feels as smooth as satin. Yes, I kind of go for it myself. I wasn't so keen about it when Tom said he was going to buy a rustic lodge. <laughs> I had visions of ants in the sugar and sleeping on pine boughs. You know the sort of thing you always think of when men talk about camping out. <laughs> Instead of which, it turned out to be box springs and linen sheets and caviar all night. <laughs> well, that's my idea of the only way to go back to nature. <laughs> it would be a perfect Eden if only Tom hadn't had to stay over in that stifling hot city. Poor darling, I'm terribly sorry for him. You look at you, Sivorite. Oh, oh, look out. <laughs> You'll ruin my beautiful new way. What I want to know is, what are you going to do without a man to wait on your hand and foot? Well, John will just have to take over the duties of host. Who? Huh? You remember John Randall, don't you, Doris? My handsome six-foot-two Apollo Belvedere of a brother. Oh, do I remember him. He was my youthful idol. Remember the time he came up to school for graduation? Uh -huh. I was so excited I lost my diploma or <laughs> ate it or something. <laughs> At any rate, I never laid eyes on it from that day to this. I remember. Oh, those were the days, darling. Oh, they still are, Dot. I've never felt that way about anyone since. I, I mean that, well, it had voltage. You mean you've had too many admirers hanging around since. You're just spoiled, darling. Nothing of the kind. Maybe I'm just waiting for another Apollo Belvedere. <laughs> well, I've a very special one coming down over the weekend. Oh? Mm-hmm. Rex Hanford. Oh, the movie actor. Yes, the same. Oh, he has the most heavenly way of holding hands. And when he dances with you. I know, I've met him before. Grade A gigolo, always wanting to wrestle. He makes me sick. Oh, you and John, just a couple of Puritans at heart. What? John can't stand Rex either. Oh. Oh, wait till he hears I've asked him down here. He'll probably burst a blood vessel. <laughs> I wonder if he'll remember me after all these years. Rex? No foolish John. Oh. Does he still resemble the idol of my girlish dreams anymore? Well, judge for yourself. Here he comes now. Oh. Down the path looking like a thundercloud. Somebody's told him about Rex. Oh, Dot, he still is. I... Oh, I mean, he's... My, my goodness, is my nose shining? Oh, you look divine, Angel. Like a particularly seductive mermaid. <laughs> hey, sis. Hmm. Look here. What's this about Rex Hanford coming down for the weekend? Oh, isn't it wonderful? But what does Tom, Tom think? Tom doesn't object one little bit. He's giving him to me for a birthday present. Doris. Oh, oh, John, you remember Doris? Doris? Of course, Doris Blake, my roommate at school. We met graduation week. I had the supper dance with you at the prom. We... We went walking in the moonlight down by the old mill. Oh, yes, of course, the old mill. Oh, I remember you. You were a skinny little thing with freckles. John, you brute. Well, she was. You were kind of gangly yourself. Huh? I'll never forget the way you tripped on that croquet wicket and got grass stains on your white pants. <laughs> Look here, young lady, I didn't trip. That is, well, how's anyone expected to see wickets in the dark? <laughs> You took me across that croquet field on purpose. I did nothing of the sort. And besides, I warned you to look out. Well, bye-bye, you... angels. I've got to get back to the house. It's time for the rest of my guests to arrive. Have a lovely sight. Mm. 
Women. They're all alike. She's afraid someone else will freeze onto that Hanford before she gets her clutches on him. Oh, don't be silly. Just because Rex is good-looking and has an amusing line of chatter... Oh, to... oh, so you're as infatuated with that empty-headed ninny as all the rest of these tittering females. And why not? After all, Rex has lovely manners, and that's more than can be said of most men nowadays. What? That, that parlor Casanova? And he dances divinely. Yes, and knows all the tricks when it comes to making love. Maybe you could get him to give you a few lessons. You don't say. Look here, Doris. I don't need any lessons. Really? How perfectly thrilling. I'll show you I'm no slouch. I'll... <clears throat> oh, John. Not bad, huh? Well, how's this? Oh, I... That's just a sample of how a real He-Man kisses, which is something every girl should know. John Mandel, I could kill you for that. Well, you asked for it. Why, you hit me. You're lucky I didn't black both your eyes. Doris, my sweet, this is perfectly priceless running into you down here like this. I've been trying to get in touch with you all week. Oh, I'm sorry, Rex, but I've been so terribly busy. But... I'll just have to get Dot to put you in my car for this picnic today. It only holds two, thank heavens. We can make up for lost time. Oh, thanks a lot, Rex, but Dot said something about my going with her brother. Oh, don't mind me. I'll take the lunch in my car. I'd rather. Uh, Righto, I'll just go speak to Dot. Uh, don't go away, my pet. I'll be waiting here, impatiently. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Satisfied with what? You've certainly got him eating out of your hand. You mean Rex? He is fascinating, isn't he? So unlike the rest of the boors one meets in society. I always heard he had a weakness for dizzy blondes. You'll make a very nice addition to his collection. John Randall, I, I hope you have a horrid accident and die a slow, lingering death. Well, you know, you might just get your wish at that. What? The road up to that cabin at Eagle's Nest where we're going for lunch is pretty steep. There are plenty of precipices. Oh, John, you wouldn't do anything foolish. But me? Oh, don't worry. I'm not the type. Well, well, it's all set, my darling. You're the lucky girl that gets to ride with me. Oh, Rex, how marvelous. Mm, apple sauce. I do wish you'd keep both hands on the wheel. This road winds, so it's dangerous. No, with me, there's always danger, my sweet. Oh, I know, but I mean, this is really dangerous. Rex, look out. He's trying to pass us. Oh! It's that fool brother of Dot's. I hope he breaks his neck. Imagine driving like that on a mountain road. It's a wonder we weren't all killed. Oh, dear, I hope he doesn't have an accident. Oh, bother. It started to rain. Oh, never mind. The cabin will be dry once we get there. If we ever do. Oh, Lord, I'd like to throttle the man who invented picnics. Oh, Rex, look. Look up there ahead. It's John's car. He's running through a tree. Serves him right, the silly ass, for cutting corners like oh, that. Oh, dear, what if he's hurt? Not a chance. He's getting out. Sound as a bell. He would be. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. I've had an accident. But, Rex, we've got to stop. He wants a lift. Let him walk. Do him good. But, Rex, it's raining. Oh, good. I hope he shrinks. I do hate big, burly men. Rex. Uh, yes, my pet. Rex, there's something wrong with the right front wheel. Hmm? I don't feel anything. Of course not. It's on my side. Rex, I think we've got a flat tire. You'd better get out and look. Uh, in this rain... Well, if you don't, it'll be torn to shreds in no time on this road. Oh, bother. I suppose you're right. Look out for the mud. Oh, how, how can I? The beastly road is full of it. Well, nothing wrong with that tire, old girl. That's all I wanted to know. Here, hold on. What do you think you're doing? Driving back to get John. The walk won't hurt you either. Oh, 
decided to come back, huh? Oh, John, it wasn't my fault. I tried to get Rex to stop. Thanks for your solicitude. I'm very touched. Oh, I wasn't thinking about you. I was worried about the lunch. Oh, well, if you're such a glutton, you can help me move it over to your rumble seat before it melts away. By all means. Wait till I get the back open. Look out. Don't go near that precipice. This mud slippery as all get out. Don't worry about me. I don't. It's those darn fool high heel shoes you're wearing. Why any woman with a brain in her head wants to tramp around the woods in high heel shoes... They're are... not high. They're medium. Medium, my foot. And if you think I'm going to wear low heels and flop around like a flat-footed... Yeah! John, I'm slipping. John! Doris! Doris! Good heavens. Doris, darling. Dearest, are you all right? I don't know. I, I'm stuck in a tree, but I'm slipping fast. Well, hold on, darling. There's a ledge I think I can get to. I'll get down to it somehow. I can reach it from there. Just hold on. I'm holding. Johnny. Johnny, darling, do be careful. I'm all right, dear. Now, if you'll slide down, I'll, I'll catch you. All right. Here I come. Take it easy. Take it. Oh. Doris. Dearest, are you hurt? No, 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 I've just scratched a bit. You, you can let me go now. Not a chance. Don't you ever do a thing like that again. You scared the daylights out of me. Oh, darling, I adore you. You do not. You call me a stringy little thing with freckles. Well, you were. And anyway, you said I was gangly. Maybe you think you weren't. And then the way you carried on about Rex Hanford. I did not. You certainly did. <laughs> Well, now what's the matter? You've got mud all over your chin. <laughs> you, you should see your own face. Smeared. That's what you are, literally smeared. I love it. So do I. Oh, darling. Oh, Johnny boy. I'd be willing to fall a dozen times a day if I could always be sure of landing in your arms like this. You have been listening to a romance featuring the love story girl and presented with the permission of Street Dan Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine. Thank you.